Hey coders and welcome to episode one of our property service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be getting a better handle on the properties scope. So if you recall from our lock service playlist season eight there were three separate contexts in which you could apply your lock. You could apply it to the document the script, or finally, a user. And the property service is actually set up the exact same way. So you could apply a property, and if you remember what a property is, it is a key value pair of data. You could apply that property to a certain document, a specific script, or finally, an individual user. So what does that mean? Well, let's say that you apply or tag a property to a specific user. That means that no other users can access, can read or write to that property. Only that user that you tag the property to. Similarly, if you have a document, you can store certain properties specifically to that document and no other document can access those properties. And the same with the script. So this just helps a little bit more with access control and for you just to get a better control of who can see what data. So let's jump on over to the code and see all of these properties in action and get a better conceptual view of it all. The nice thing about the property service is that no matter what scope you assign your property to, it's all going to return the same type of property. And what that means is that once you have that type, you can access the same set of methods no matter the scope that you apply again the property to. So let's see a quick example of that. If we type in property service, and we have three different uh, scopes that we can assign it to, if you recall. And let's uh, let's look at all of them right now. I'm going to wrap this statement around a logger log. All right, and I'm going to now copy this line and paste it two more times. But instead of saying document properties for this one, I'm going to say script properties. And then the last one is I'm going to now say user properties. So now if we save this and run the function set property, if we hit the run button, as you can see, everything ran successfully. So now let's go check out our logs. All right, so if you remember, our first uh, logger log was get document properties, and this returned the value null. And that kind of actually makes sense because this script right here is a standalone script. And in order to call the get document properties method, you need to run that uh, statement from either a bounded script or an add-on. In this, in this project right here, this script is neither of those. This is a standalone script. So this actually makes a whole lot of sense that it is returning null because if you try to get the document properties of a document that doesn't even exist, it's not really going to know what you're talking about. So it just returns null. All right, so the second line was getting the script properties, and this does say script properties, but this is actually of type property, uh, which is going to be the exact same type that this is. This says user properties, but it is of type property. So these two properties are going to be sharing the same exact methods, or the class property, the type of property, is going to share the same exact methods. So that's pretty cool. Let me now hit this OK button. And let's now take a look at both the script properties and the user properties so that we can get a little bit more context. I'm not actually not going to showcase the document properties here because, again, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense. This is a standalone script, but all the methods work the exact same way uh, for this document properties method as well. All right, so I'm going to delete that, and I'm actually going to delete the logger log statements as well. So let's say that I wanted to now store some properties both on the script and for the specific user. So we haven't learned this method yet, uh, set property, but it's pretty intuitive. I think you'll get, uh, or I think you'll understand it pretty quickly. So again, we need, every property has a key and a value. So we need to supply both the key and the value. So for our script property, we want to uh, say uh, something random. Let's just say current version. All right, and then the value we'll assign to that is, I don't know, let's say eight. And by the way, when you set a property, both of the key, both the key and the value needs to be of type string. So I guess this is just a, 
a requirement of the property service, um, or it's, it's rather a restriction, but it's, it's not too big of a deal. If you, if you supply something that's not of type string, it's going to typecast it immediately to a string, and that is just how property service is set up. So let's do one more for the user properties. Again, this, this property is going to be assigned to the script, and now the second property is going to be assigned to the user. So this is going to be something a little bit more secretive. Let's say password, and let's just say test1234. All right, so this, again, this, this property right here on set or uh, on get user properties is going to be set to this account right here, davidthewise7 at gmail.com. And this property right here, current version, is going to be assigned to this script right here. So everything uh, within season 12. All right, so now if I say uh, save, and if I, um, if I run it, then now both of these properties have been set. So let's take a quick look at that and see if they have uh, successfully been set to our property service. So now instead of saying set property, we're going to say get property. Again, we're going to look at both of these um, methods in the very next episode, but it's pretty intuitive. So you're going to get properties by their key. So that's how you access the data uh, in property service. All right, so now if we switch this to get property, and actually let me uh, wrap this with a logger log statement. And I'll do the same for this line as well. And now if we hit save and we hit the run button, it's running a function. It looks like everything ran successfully. So let's go view our logs. And there we go. So the first one again was the script properties and we try, we're trying to get the property of the key uh, current version and, and it successfully returned for us the, uh, the string eight. And then similarly, we were trying to get the user properties. Uh, one of them has a key of password and here is its return value and that is test one, two, three, four. So everything is working exactly how it should. All right, so now, uh, if you remember, the script properties are actually properties assigned to the entirety of the script. But the user properties are only assigned to this specific user right here, davidthewise7 at gmail.com. As you can tell, I have shared this script with another user. This is my college email address, and I have actually logged on to that over here in this other tab. So let me just refresh this page just to capture the changes that have been made since, uh, since logging on. And here we go, we have both of these right here. So now if I run the function git property, then if I save it and I run it, and it looks like everything ran successfully. So let's go now view our logs. So here we go. So if you if you if you see in our logs when we tried to get the script properties that returned for us eight as it should. We are accessing the same script as as this account right here. But when we tried to get the user properties of the password that returned for us null. And that is because when we set the property up here when we said get user property set property of password this property was assigned specifically and uniquely to this user account right here. So if we tried to access that property from a different user account, say this college email address, it's not going to work. It's not going to return for us the password. And that is because again, this, this property right here was assigned specifically to this account and if we tried to access that from a different account, it's going to return for us null. But that doesn't mean that we don't have our own set of user properties, right? So if we say, uh, we're going to set our own prop or our own property on this user account. Let's say password for us is going to be uh, test one two three four five. And if we run set property, we're going to save it. We're going to run it. And now, if we run git property, then now this should return for us the property under the key password as test one two three four five not 1234, which is the password for this account right here. So let me now view our logs. And as you can see, we did indeed get test12345 for these user properties right here. If we did the same method, if we said get property for this account right here, then it should not be test12345, it should just be test1234, like we have set uh, in, in a previous execution of this code. 
So as we're waiting for the logs, we can anticipate seeing test one, two, three, four. Indeed we do, there we go, right there. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. These user properties are assigned spe to specific users, but the script properties are uh, shared for every user that accesses this individual script. So there's one more thing that I want to show before I close out this uh, episode, and, and that is having to do with the script properties. So because actually script properties are shared between everyone who accesses this script, we can actually view these script properties from a different location. So if we go into file, if we scroll all the way down to project properties, and if we go into this tab right here, script properties, we can see that the current version is eight. So this is the property that we just assigned and it's shared again amongst the entirety of the script. So we can access this script property from this account or from this account. It doesn't matter. Uh, all of these properties can be seen from this, uh, from this project properties panel right here. So again, that's pretty cool. And by the way, the same thing goes for if you want to access the document properties. Uh, if you had, like, say, if this was a if this was a bounded script, you could access the bounded or you could access the document properties and start setting and getting properties specific to that document. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and are ready for the very next one, which is going to be uh, a little bit more exciting. If you did like this video, though, and learned something, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next exciting episode.